Hello, uh, I'm Ronan. Um, just on who I am, I don't really need to talk at all about who I am because uh, Paula has already really talked about all that already. So I did exactly what Paula did. Um, so I had no idea what I wanted to do and I went into general science and then I ended up in physics and then I did a PhD and that's when we went different ways because Paula got a real job um, but, uh, but I'm still kind of you know, hanging around here hoping that I don't have to get a real job for, for a little bit longer. So I'm just going to talk about how I'm avoiding getting a real job. Um, so just first of all, what do I do? Well, um, I have two different jobs in Trinity and this is, one of them is in Cran here as a researcher, okay? And the other one is just across the road here in the Trinity Access Program, okay? And the Trinity Access Program is, is um, a kind of organization set up for educational access. And I'll talk a little bit about that uh, later. But really, both jobs involve experimenting. So that's the reason why I love both of them, because they both have goals, um, but they're uncertain. So in, in both cases, we have something that we want. We do some experiments. We're hopeful of the outcomes, but we don't really know. And I think that's kind of exciting, and that, that's why I like doing what I do. So I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about my research first, and then I'll talk about my other job in teaching and outreach. So. Um, what's my research? Well, uh, this is my friend Etna, um, and she explains my research much better than I do. Okay? She's a journalist for the Sunday Times, so she's much better at being succinct. So uh, she tells people, whenever we're at a party and I ask, um, someone asks me what I do, um, generally they get really bored after about two minutes and their eyes glaze over. And so Etna usually jumps in and she's like, I'll tell you what Ronan does in one sentence and stop him boring you. So she says that I take pencils, uh, I put them into soap, to save the environment. And um, that sounds a bit ridiculous, but it's actually, uh, it's, 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 it's pretty much what I do um, with varying success. So when she's talking about pencils, what she's actually talking about are 2D materials, okay? And a 2D material is something that's very long and very wide, but not very thick. So one example would be graphene. And this is, this is an example of a sheet of graphene right here. I don't know if you guys have ever heard about graphene. Um, but basically, it's a, it's a kind of sheet of carbon atoms in this kind of chicken wire structure. And even though it's thousands of atoms long and thousands of atoms wide, it's only one atom thick. And um, what's that got to do with pencils? Well, graphene is just the stuff at the end of your pencil. So it exists in nature, but these sheets are stacked on top of each other to form graphite. Okay? And the thing about graphene is, you know, if it's in your pencil, what's so special about it? Well, when it's stacked on top of each other like this, it's not very special. You know, it's brittle. I mean, we can write with it. We've known about it for thousands of years. But when you take the individual sheets out and you separate them, suddenly they have all these amazing properties. Like, for instance, the stuff in the end of your pencil is brittle. You can break it quite easily. But when you take one of these individual sheets, suddenly you have the strongest material known to man. So stronger than diamonds, stronger than steel. So that's the pencils part, right? Okay. But so how do I make this stuff, right? So how you originally make it, and the guy who originally made it won the Nobel Prize for Physics last year, he used sticky tape. And I'm not being kind of, uh, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm not simplifying it. Uh, he really did just use sticky tape. So he pressed down on the on the on the on the pencils, uh, took up uh, the sticky tape, had a look in a microscope, and he got some sheets of graphene. Okay. Now. If you want to do something useful with it, that's not really a viable option for making it because you'd have to have an army of people with, with sticky tape and it wouldn't really work. Okay? So what I do is I use a much more high-tech method. So I use soap. Okay? And, and how we do that is we get the graphite or any two-dimensional material and we put it in the soap, these little soap molecules, and here we, are, here we can see them all stacked up. Then we add sonic energy. Okay? It's basically just sound waves. All right? And that breaks the sheets apart. Now, the reason why they're stuck together in nature in the first place, though, is because they love to come back together. They love to stick together. So what the soap does is it coats the surface of the sheets, and it stops them sticking back together. And it does that through its structure. So soap, this looks complicated, but it's actually a very simple molecule. It's divided into two parts, one that loves water and one that hates water. And the part that likes water um, protrudes out into the water, whereas the part that hates water sticks to the individual graphene sheets. And so it acts as kind of like a life vest. And what you're left with is then these kind of dispersions. So we have our, our little individual sheets dispersed in the water. And these are just different types of materials. So not just graphene, different types of chemicals. And they're different colors because they have different electrical properties. And that means that they're useful for different things. 
And um, when we look closely in on these, uh, on these dispersions, we can see that they're made up of these kind of sheets. And they're long and they're wide, but they're transparent because they're so thin. And when we can zoom in even further, we can see the individual atoms. So this is the kind of hexagonal chicken wire structure I showed you guys earlier. And these little white dots are, are atoms that we can see in the microscope here in Trinity. So pencils, soap, how are we saving the environment, right? Um, well, you can, with these materials, reduce the amount of petrol that you use. You can recycle the petrol that we waste. And hopefully, we can replace petrol altogether. So the first way, what about reducing the amount of petrol we use? Well, we use a lot of petrol moving stuff around. So wouldn't it be great if we could reduce the amount of packaging that we use when we move stuff around? And the best way to do that is to make it stronger. So like the plastics that we have, we can use less of them if we can make them lighter and stronger. And you guys remember that I said the graphene was the strongest material known to man. And because it's only one atom thick, it's also pretty light. And in fact, it's so strong that if, if you want to break a single sheet, and this is something that's only one atom thick, you would have to stand an elephant on top of a pencil just to crack the sheet. Okay? So it's really, really strong. So by adding small amounts of it to a plastic, we can make the plastic lighter, and we can make it stronger, and we can use less. We can also make the plastic less porous to gases. And what that allows us to do is it allows us to turn glass bottles into plastic bottles. So for stuff like beer that can ordinarily be uh, stored in glass, now we can store it in plastic. And that allows us to save even more petrol. But what about the petrol that we waste? So you guys might, will notice whenever, this is just a thermal image of a car, right? And when I, was, when I was younger, we had a cat. And whenever the car would pull up, the cat would sit on the car for about two hours afterwards. And because the engine was really warm, the bonnet's still really warm, right? So you can see that from this thermal image, the red stuff there. And that happens whenever we burn fuel. We, we give off heat. But maybe what you guys didn't know was that of all the power, of all the fuel that your engine burns, 62% of that is just lost to heat. So that means that two thirds of the petrol that you're using isn't going into moving your car. It's not doing anything useful. All it's just doing is heating up the air around it. So wouldn't it be great if we could recycle some of that, some of that heat and use it effectively? So these 2D materials can also make these things called thermoelectric devices. And they recycle the waste heat into electricity. So we can use it to run our car batteries, radios, things like that. Finally, though, we want to replace petrol altogether. So we need stuff like wind power and solar power. But there's a big problem with these in the fact that like, it's not always windy when, when we need power. So you know, if we, if we want to use solar power or we want to use wind power, we have to store it for when we need it. So like, if people want a lot of power at any given time now, we just put more coal on the fire. But how can we do that with solar and wind power? And how you store energy is very, very important, and it's also very difficult. So these new materials, because of their high surface area, they act as kind of really good energy storage devices. And so they can help us make wind power and uh, solar power a realistic kind of uh, option for the future. So that's my research, right? Um, it is really just pencils, soap, and, and the environment. That's it. Um, but what I also do is some teaching and outreach for the Trinity Access Program. And the Trinity Access Program is an educational access program. So basically, when you come to a place like Trinity, a lot of people are from the same types of backgrounds. Because you know, the more privileged you are, the easier it is to get an education. Even in the country where we have free education, some people can afford grinds, or they can afford better schools, or you know, their parents are more interested in their education. Lots of different reasons. So to kind of combat this and make sure that we don't just have a kind of monoculture here in Trinity College, we have an access program. And the idea is, is that we can let people in on reduced points, or maybe mature students who haven't even done their leaving cert, bring them back to school, get them into Trinity College, and give them the same kind of opportunities that we've gotten and that we've taken for granted. So I do a little bit of teaching on a foundation course for that for young adults and, and uh, mature students. And basically, they have to pass, if they want to do a, a course in science, they have to pass a kind of year-long science course here in Trinity College. And the idea is, is that we get them used to the college environment, that we, we get them used to the college way of learning, and that we get them up to speed so that they're on a kind of level playing field with the people who will be coming in first year with them next year. So I teach the physics course on that. Um, it's very, very interesting. Like, it's not like teaching for the Leaving Cert or anything like that, because you kinda, I get to just decide whatever I want to teach. 
and I get to decide how I teach it. So I get to experiment with different ways of teaching, um, you know, problem-based learning, lots of different stuff. Um, no class is the same, even if you've taught it twice, classes are different, so it's always, it's always a little bit different. And also your students aren't all the same. So all you guys are in the kind of, you're in the same age bracket, you've all learned roughly the same things. But the students in this class, some of them are in their 40s and some of them are only teenagers. And so how do you teach someone physics if one person's just done their leaving cert in maths and the other person is kind of starting off with fractions again? So you've got to be creative and you've got to experiment with lots of different ways to teach people. So that's my teaching. Uh, also with TAP, we do some outreach programs. So besides kind of, if you imagine the, the foundation course is kind of like, that's treating the problem, which is that we have some people that really should be getting into university and they're not, so we're, we're trying to get them in. But what about all the people that aren't even applying? What about all the people that don't even come to us in TAP, that never even consider college as an option or certainly science in college as an option? So the idea is, is that we, we identify um, areas that are underrepresented in Trinity, um, socioeconomic areas, and, and we try to get them in from a very young age to do maths and science. So I'm a project coordinator on, on the Pathways to STEM program, which is science, technology, engineering, and maths. And we try to get them in and do different activities, um, stuff like this, but maybe at a, at a lower level because they're a lot younger, and then keep them coming in from the age of eight all the way up to 18 so that they become familiar with the university and it's not such a big leap for them to say, actually, I, I'm going to go there after school. And these are just some examples of some, some things we did. So this was a biodiversity workshop with some, some very young kids. And this is Shane O'Donnell, who's a, I don't know anything about hurling, but uh, he, he's a famous hurler who scored lots of goals in, in some final um, that I don't know anything about. I do, I do like sports. I'm not like a typical uh, nerdy physicist. I, I, I like football. I just don't like hurling. Um, but anyway, so we try to get these people in. We try to pair them up with mentors. And the idea is just that, you know, they'll consider something that they haven't before. Um, so I don't have a slide on what I hate and what I, I love about my job, because I don't really hate anything about my job. I mean, I'm really busy. Um, <laughs> But I really, really, really love my job. I can't believe that I get paid to do what I do. It seems criminal, um, because I would do it anyway. It's, it's like a hobby. And that's what's great about going to college. That's what's great about you know, having these kind of opportunities, because you, you have the chance to turn what you like into a job. All I ever did was stuff that I liked. I had no idea where I was going. And I really, really love my job, jobs. And uh, I'm really just trying to stick around here and avoid getting a real one. So uh, thanks very much. <laughs>